and welcome back to my channel. If you can hear some background noise, I've got the window open because it's really warm today and we have some workers outside. I think they are mending one of the curbs. So I do apologize for the noise. Today I'm gonna do a look using the Huda Beauty Toffee Brown Obsessions palette. I wanted to do something that was kind of inspired by the color that I'm wearing. So to start off with, I'm going to apply some of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. The shade I've got is 5.5 and I've not used this in a while. So if you are somebody that wants to prime, then do so now. Um, I'm gonna go straight in with the foundation. I absolutely adore this foundation. There's around 50 shades available. It is full coverage, but it really does still leave your skin looking like skin, but so much more flawless. I never find that this oxidizes. It stays in place all day. I have an oily T-zone and I get on absolutely fine with it. I stay matte most of the day, um, but I do need to kind of just top up a little bit around my pores or my nose. But other than that, I really do love this foundation. It's so good. You can see instantly it gives me a perfected look, but I don't look at all cakey. The color I've got is 5.5 neutral. I do have a neutral skin tone. Still fine with neutral colors. They are a little bit yellow still and they stay looking yellow until you've got your bronzer and your blush on um, and then at the end of it it all comes together. I'm going to take that over my eyelids just because it is so noisy outside. I'm going to take this over my eyelids just to neutralize them because it is full coverage. If I don't apply it there um, you will still see that the skin kind of doesn't match the rest of my face otherwise. And I love that it's full coverage enough that I don't feel like I would need to go in and conceal any of my pigmentation. For me, it gives enough coverage. The only thing I like to do is just go in and tap around the pores with a tiny brush. It kind of pushes it into the skin and gives a really flawless finish to the pores. So I've just had a nosy out the window and they're doing the rendering. Um, they were doing the curb earlier, but now they're doing the rendering. So if you can hear like a swishing noise, it's because they are skimming the wall. It's not my house, it's next door. So as you can see, my skin looks lovely and flawless. Um, I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to sit underneath the eyes because there will likely be some fall down. That means I'll be able to just wipe away the foundation and then reapply it. You can just do your eyes first, but sometimes I like to do my face and then I don't mind doing a little bit of a tidy up. You can also apply some shadow shields underneath your eyes, which will catch any fall down. And then you can just kind of go over the areas that the tackiness sort of like picks up that foundation. So completely up to you. I'm gonna do eyes, not set the skin, wipe away and reapply just to tidy up. So I'm gonna zoom in, do the eye makeup, and then I'll come back. I'm just quickly showing you a little bit of how I fill in my eyebrows using my Urban Decay brow blade because so many of you always ask me and I have a tutorial dedicated to this method with this pen and I will link it on screen for you now. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be using the Huda Beauty Toffee Brown Obsessions palette. So I'm taking the first shade in the palette which is a very warm toned light brown and I'm buffing that through the socket using my MAC 286S Tapered Duo Blending Brush. And I really like this brush for blending because it picks up only a small amount of the product, but it has all of the slightly shorter bristles to really help the blending process. So it is definitely one of my favorite brushes and I will link it below for you. Using that same brush, I'm dipping it into this warm toned mustard yellow. This is also a matte finish and I'm buffing that onto the same area that we applied the first color, but it's gonna be ever so slightly lower, so more into the socket and a little bit onto that eyelid. This step is optional. I'm pulling the color out past the tail of the eyebrow. I'm doing this because the shades aren't too dissimilar to the skin tone, they're on that spectrum. So I'm blowing the color out for a really beautifully diffused finish. Next, I'm going into this metallic eyeshadow this is a warm light gold. And after picking that up on my bristles, I'm going to mist it slightly with a setting spray. And this is just going to help that metallic finish look even more reflective. I am placing that on the inner corner of the eyes and then tapping what's left on the bristles underneath my tear duct and a little bit onto the very inner corner of the top lid. Next, I'm going into this chunky sparkle, which believe it or not, is actually more of a peach tone, but looks a little bit browny in the palette. The placement for this is the inner third of the top lid. And as you can see, I'm using the same brush and it has also been misted. Then I'm going into this metallic yellow, almost light copper tone. 
This is going on the center of the eyelid and we are going to feather it across into that peach tone that we've applied on the inner third and then we're also going to feather it out towards the outer third. I'm still using the same brush and I will do for the next color as well. This one's a bit more of a true copper and it's also a metallic finish. It's going directly next to the middle shade. And then don't forget to tap over the seam of the last shade so we get a nice transition between all of these colors. Next we're going into this warm toned dark brown and this is in a matte finish. And using a small dense brush, I'm going to very softly run that along the top of the eyelash line. I'm keeping it thicker on the outer edge and I am going to wing it out, but we are going to use this as the basis for the next part of the shape that we're creating. So if you don't necessarily suit a wing, still give this method a try because it is slightly different. On the back of my hand, I sprayed a little bit of the setting spray and then I dipped my brush into that with the powder on and this just made it a little bit easier to work with because sometimes matte finishes over a shimmer doesn't always come out too intense. Next, I'm going into this matte brown. It is a little bit lighter than the brown we just used, but when you actually put them onto the skin, they're not that different. This one has slightly more red to it. So here, what you can see I'm doing is going from the outer wing, I'm taking the color back on itself but into the socket but notice I'm not taking it too high I'm still keeping it kind of perpendicular to that crease I've got going through the socket so even if you have hooded eyes you can recreate this shape you would just make the actual crease line a little bit stronger using this color and it's also really good if you've got very round eyes because you can almost give your eyes a little bit more of an almond shape here I'm just going in with my blending brush from earlier and just softening that Along my waterline, I'm using this Marc Jacobs Gold Eyeliner, and I thought this was going to be a really good idea, and although it looks nice from a distance, it did kind of make my eyes look a little bit more red than they already are, but it was quite effective because it does catch the light. So if you don't have red eyes, it is a nice one to try, but as you can see, it does kind of enhance the redness to my eyeball. Underneath my bottom eyelashes, I'm going in with the same shades I've applied to my top lid. Then I'm cleaning up and reapplying a little bit of foundation to this area so it looks beautifully brand spanking new. I use my cellar water just to remove the fall down. If you have super dry eyes, you might want to reapply a little bit of moisture before your foundation. So for this tutorial, I'm very excited to partner with BL Glue Eyeliner. Look how beautiful this packaging is. So if you've not heard of BL Glue Eyeliner, it is an eyeliner that contains a glue to stick your eyelashes to. It's a product we've seen popping up over the last year. What I love about this one is its efficacy, how jet black it is, and how fluid it has remained since I've been using it. So I just wanted to demonstrate it on my arm first just to show you how fluid it is and the fact that you can create a very fine line, a thick line, and that when it dries down, it really is super black. So I'm just gonna place an eyelash on my arm. You just give it a little prod for two to three seconds. And as you can see, it really does stay in place. I'm just gonna show you by flicking it backwards and forwards, it's not peeling off. Then I'm just gonna take some micellar water and hold it over there for a few seconds. And as I give it a gentle wipe, you can see it really does come away nice and easy. A little tip is to use a oil-based remover on a cotton bud and run that close to the root of your eyelashes to remove any remaining product. So the eyelashes I'm going to use today are these Lash Face Beauty Vacay Vibes in LA. And to adhere them, I'm going to use that BL Glue Eyeliner super close to the root of my eyelashes. We still want to be able to see that brown eyeshadow in place. The tip itself is made of felt, so it's really comfortable to run really close to the root of your eyelashes. It's free from formaldehyde, latex and parabens. And compared to a traditional lash glue, this is a mess-free alternative. Now, unlike traditional lash glue, where you have to wait for it to go tacky, you can go straight in with your false eyelashes. I always like to go in with the center first, press it up against the eyeliner, laying across your natural lash line, press it in place for one to two seconds, and then tuck in the corners. You can see it automatically really adheres to that eyeliner, but before it completely dries, you do have time to pull it off and move it if you need to. I always get to play with the products before I agree to any form of sponsorship. I first had a play with this on my arm, sticking the eyelashes, and I was so impressed. So then I wanted to see what it was like on the skin with no eyeshadow, which obviously was brilliant. But the real test with these kind of pens is to see if it can go over the eyeshadow. Usually you'll find that that dries up the felt and you only get to use it on one eye. But as you can see, this is extremely fluid. It's sitting on top of metallic eyeshadow and it hasn't dried out at all. Now, obviously it is recommended that you apply it to clean skin, but as a makeup artist, I'm always gonna be using eyeliner over eyeshadow. So for me, it was really important that it was something that worked over eyeshadow, and this one is phenomenal at that. 
If you are somebody who's quite slow at applying your eyelashes and you find your eyeliner's dried before you've really got your eyelashes sealed in place at the corners, just reapply it and then press your lashes into place. As you can see, I'm being quite vigorous with them and they are not moving. So now I'm just going to apply one coat of mascara to my natural eyelashes on the top and bottom. And again, I am still using my Gucci mascara. I feel like the tube's got some kind of undetectable extension charm on it because it just seems to be going on and on. It hasn't dried out at all. I use this every single day and I think it is the only mascara that I've ever had that's lasted this long. It's been worth the money. So now I've done my eye makeup, I'm going to warm up the skin. Today I'm gonna to use the NARS Laguna Bronzer. So I'm going to start around the hairline and we do tend to get colour on the very top of our forehead and our forehead is naturally curved so we tend to get a bit of a shadow on the curvature of our foreheads but when we use foundation it does tend to make it look very very flat which in turn makes it look a lot bigger so we want to add a little bit more shape back in with the bronzer it'll look as if we've had a little bit of sun and it will make it look a bit shapelier a little bit smaller and it will just add to that warmth that we want on the skin. So I like to take it above the eyebrows and then around. Obviously if you've got quite a small forehead this way, you might want to avoid the very top. You might only want to apply the sides. Because this is a bronzer and we want that warmth, we're taking it over the cheekbone, not too low down. So you can kind of do circular motions so that you're covering this area. If you were using contour, you'd want to keep it quite specific into that hollow and not too far across. But with a bronzer, you can kind of sweep it across the cheekbone and then up onto the nose but you want to keep it a little bit higher I don't really like that gold eyeliner it makes my eyes look even redder I always have red eyes I don't like to use the drops that take the red away because it's just restricting the blood flow to the veins which is quite scary because then you'll end up like the rebound effect and end up with even more red eyes I find that even when I'm not wearing makeup I get red eyes I do find them worse when I've got sun lotion on and I've tried antihistamines and everything but just the last few years they tend to get a little bit more red. So if there's anybody that knows why we get red eyes, are we deficient in something? Let me know. On my cheeks today I'm going to use Nude Sticks Nudies Bloom in the shade Rusty Rouge. I wanted something that was a little bit more of a kind of red or orange undertone rather than kind of pink um, because we've got kind of like almost rusted tones on the eyes but on the yellow spectrum I thought this would go better. This colour really does give you that kind of like you've been sitting in Sicily catching the sun. It's a really lovely tone. It's not one that I would normally opt for you know I like to go for kind of like peachy tones but um this would work so much nicer. I'm gonna pop some of this on my lips first. I really do like to match the cheeks to the lips because then the lips can be a lot more subtle. I'm not a massive lipstick wearer as you know. So I'm only using a very light amount, I'm just patting it in to give a flush of colour. And then use a tissue just to pat that in and just remove a little bit of the excess. It will kind of give like a velvet finish, almost like you've got bitten lips which is quite nice. Now as this is a nudies bloom, which is one of the ranges where it gives that kind of dewy finish to the skin, this will give a lovely luminescence to your face. I'm going to keep this quite high on the cheeks. And I'm using a stipple motion. I've worked the product onto the back of my hand, so I'm only using a very light amount. Then I'm going to go back in with my sponge and just stipple over it so it's really soft. This is a totally different colour palette to what I would normally do, um, which is quite nice. So really press that into the skin with your sponge. And then use what's left on your actual bristles. And then just start to pull the colour across a little bit. So having that slight pink tone to the tip of your nose, a little bit on your chin, just makes it look as if you've been sun-kissed. I'm going to finish off with some faux freckles, just dotted over the nose to add a little bit more to that sun-kissed finish to the skin. Don't forget to vary them in size. I've used this before. This one is my Moulak One Liner um, in brown. It's a little bit knackered now which is good because it means it doesn't put too much onto the skin Um I was using it as an eyeliner for a while and then once it got a bit dry I started to use it for freckles and it's been perfect and then you could go in and powder for an even softer finish and also to set your makeup 
it's really really subtle you might not even be able to notice it but i can see it and it gives it the perfect sunkist finish i have some good news as well we are finally able to fly to our destination for the wedding so today i've been a little bit excited because it means we will be getting married like I know we're getting married, but with the date always being a bit uncertain, you just can't look forward to it. And um, so I'm really, really excited to say it's all open, it's all up and running, so we will be going in April and I can't wait. So that completes today's makeup tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. All the products I've used will be listed and linked in the description bar. Don't forget to check out the BL Glue Eyeliner. It's one of the best I've tried so far. You can get it on Amazon and I'm gonna link it below for you. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel. I have an array of videos on my channel for you to have a nosy through over 450 videos now make sure you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads come follow me outside of youtube over on instagram where i'm most active which is at show me makeup and i will see you next week bye guys